How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Let's Play series. Oh, yeah, guys. So I had asked you guys to give me some suggestions what we should put up here since we didn't really have anything here. It was just kind of an open, an open, empty space. And you guys have suggested that we should put some of these new blocks uh, from 114 in here, and that makes a lot of sense. So uh, I put a lectern here. We got ourselves a cartography table, a stone cutter. Yeah, you can... I, I think you can save resources by using the stone cutter to make stairs, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I actually haven't used this thing yet. Uh, let's try making cobblestone stairs. I think you put in one cobblestone, you get one stair. Is that how that works? So you can choose either a slab, a stair, or a wall. Uh, so normally you craft it, you get six cobblestone, you get four stairs. Did they ever change that recipe? Let's take a look at this. So if we do this, yeah, so six cobblestone turns into four stairs for whatever reason. They really need to change that recipe. Or you can put in the stone cutter here, or and then you get it for one, one cobblestone. So yeah, that's kind of cool. So you can save resources for making the, uh, the stairs. I don't know if you make the slabs. Okay, so it does show you get two of those in the wall, you get one. Yeah, so you save resources on making stairs. So that's kind of cool, I suppose. Uh, all right, so we have ourselves a stone cutter, the uh, cartography table. You can use this for expanding out maps, which is kind of cool. So I think you save resources by doing it this way. Uh, the lectern, we're going to be using this a lot, I think, this episode. <laughs> uh, the lectern, you can put a book on there, and I think this emits a redstone signal based on the page that the book is currently turned to. So that's kind of cool. You got some map making things that you can do with that. This, what is this thing called? This is a fletching table. Yeah, I think I had mentioned that there aren't fletchers in the game where the table has no use. You can't right click on it, but there is actually a villager that has a fletcher job. So I was incorrect when I had mentioned that previously. Uh, loom, I haven't used at all, but I believe you can use this to like dye a banner or something. Probably not going to be using this too much, but, di but banners can be used to mark maps with waypoints. So that's kind of cool. That's some pretty good use for it. Uh, a smoker, you guys had mentioned that I should make this because a smoker will smelt food products twice as fast as a normal furnace, but it also uses uh, the fuel twice as fast. So it still smelts eight food items for one coal, but it does it twice as fast as a normal furnace would. So, I mean, that's kind of cool, I guess. Hmm. Not that big of a deal, to be honest. Blast furnace, uh, this will smelt ores twice as fast. Same thing as the cooker. Uh, uses fuel twice as fast, so you still get eight ores smelted for one piece of coal, uh, but it does it in half the speed, or half the time, I guess. All right, so this block right here, this is a smithing table. I don't think this actually has a use. You can't right-click on it, but it is used for a villager to change their job to, I guess, a smith. And then we have a barrel. So this is a new type of chest. I didn't actually realize this was in the game until I looked it up on the wiki. So barrel is for the fishing villagers, I believe. And you can use it as a regular chest. Now what's cool about this is you can stack them next to each other. Well, I guess you can do that with regular chests now. Uh, but they don't combine into a large chest. You don't have to have like a, a non-solid block above them. Like we have these slabs up above these chests so we can open them. So these could be barrels. But there'd only be one inventory. So anyway, uh, lots of cool little things that you can do with the uh, the new blocks from this update for the villager and pillager update. Uh, but what I wanted to work on today, guys, I wanted to look at getting ourselves some villagers over here. I want to get mending. That's the one thing that's holding us back right now. Uh, our fortune pick is low durability. We can repair it on an anvil with diamonds. But if we can get mending on it, all we got to do is just go to our, our uh, mob farm. And then all of our stuff gets repaired. Yeah, same thing with our helmet and our other armor. Uh, eventually, we'll make ourselves a better mob farm specifically for repairing, most likely in the end. Um, so to get a villager over here, that's going to be kind of a tricky thing. Uh, pretty much the best way to do it at this point in the game is to get a boat. You put the villager in a boat, and then you just drive it along land, <laughs> and then you get to where you're going. Uh, but yeah, we have a little hill here, which... To me, it's kind of annoying because I have to hop over this thing every single time to get over to our mob farm over here or to get to our boat where we normally go to. Uh, I would like to flatten it out. I think I saw over here that this was Y71, which isn't quite sea level at this level, but I think I would like to 
kind of dig a path through here and kind of meet over with the beach and kind of just have like a nice walking path so I don't have to keep jumping over this thing every time. And again, this will be also nicer for when we do pick up a villager and bring him over. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think it comes up to this level or maybe this level, I can't remember. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of digging, uh, terraform this out a little bit, make like a nice little valley, I think. I don't think we're just gonna do straight line. We might do kind of like a little, a curved path or something. But anyway, I'm gonna start digging on this and then we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I ended up checking out the replay mod. You guys had recommended that I do that, especially for when I uh, do things off camera that take a little bit of time. You guys let me know how did it turn out. First time really playing with that mod. Uh, in order to use it, you do have to download something called the Fabric Launcher Mod Loader or whatever, and then the Fabric API. I guess Fabric is similar to Forge. Anyway, uh, so I had to do that. I set up a separate profile for that in my vanilla launcher so I can load it up with the replay mod active. But most of the time, I'm probably not gonna be playing with that active. Uh, anyway, so we have what we needed here, a nice little wide path that if we get a boat up here, we should be able to take it along where we need it. Yep. Uh, actually, we might have a problem here. I might have to move this field. There is a slight little height difference. So if like the boat goes over and gets completely on this tilled soil, I won't be able to get out of here. <laughs> the way the boats now work, it's kind of silly. I would be able to like straddle this line right here, but yeah, if we do go over into there, yeah, we're done on the boat anyway. Uh, so the next problem is, the next thing that we need to solve is how do we get the boat from down here all the way up here? Because like I was just saying, boats have a problem. They can go on a flat surface, no problems at all. But as soon as you hit something that has a slight height difference, it's like, nope, we're not going anywhere. That could be a carpet, a snow layer, anything that has some kind of a height difference, uh, tilled soil, for instance. Yeah, it's just like, no. So in order to get this thing up, we could build some kind of like a water stream and do all sorts of craziness, or we could go a little bit simpler path, I think, and use some pistons. So pistons, you can place down here in the water like so. I'm actually gonna need uh, another block. Yeah, so we can do like a staircase of pistons. And I think this is probably gonna be our best option to do this. So yeah, we just take pistons and every single layer that we need to go up, we just place down a piston like so. That'll get us up to this layer. This one will get us up to this one. And then from here, we'll come over this way. And then we got one final one that we're gonna have to do. Looks like I have just enough pistons to do this. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna use buttons for the most part. We'll put a button next to each piston. Now you can't place buttons in water. So the very first one down here, uh, I got redstone blocks because you can place redstone in water and that'll be just fine. But yeah, like a lever or a button or whatever, yeah, it will just pop off. The water will wash it away. Uh, so the trick is, or what we're gonna do, is we'll have like our animal or our villager in the boat with us and then we'll come up to this very first piston like so, just like so. And then we just place the redstone block, right? 
So that raises it up the same level as this block so we can drive our boat forward. So we come here and we press the button, go forward, press the button, go forward. Yeah, so this is pretty pretty much a good way uh, to move a boat up elevations. Yeah, it's I don't know if this is the best way. You guys can let me know down below if you can know a better way of doing it. But uh, in my opinion, this is pretty easy. So yeah, nine pistons, some buttons, a redstone block, and we are good to go. So now we can drive our boat with a villager in it once we go pick one up and then bring it to our base in, uh, set it somewhere around here. I think that'll work just fine. All right, guys, so we made it over to this village. This is where we were hunting for ender pearls so long ago. Okay, maybe not so long ago, just like a couple episodes ago. Uh, but yeah, we are here specifically to get ourselves some of these villagers. Oh, yeah. So let's just set a boat down, try and push them into it. Get in that boat. Get in the boat. Nice. So now we're just going to go ahead and villager nap this guy, bring him back to the base. Uh, I did end up changing that design a little bit. Uh, we were using buttons in the last clip, and I decided that I would try pressure plates. I wasn't sure if that was actually going to work or not, but yeah, pressure plates, wooden ones at least, seem to work really well in that setup. And I'll show you in just a second. All right, guys, so this is the new setup. We can actually put the wooden pressure plate in the water instead of using that redstone block. So yeah, all we gotta do is just drive our boat forward and just keep pressing forward, and we are good to go. Yep, don't have to look for pressing a button or anything. We just go uphill. I like it. <laughs> yeah, and this other one works just the same way. Very good. So now we can drive our boat over into our base area and unload our villager. And we don't have to worry about, like, trying to encourage the villager to go up hills or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put this guy. We might end up putting him inside our storage area in here. Uh, but for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and try and make our way over there not get over onto this tilled ground Yeah, we want to put him somewhere. So yeah, I might just break out the front door in some of these blocks Sit him inside for safekeeping go grab another one because I want to have a couple of villagers if not three uh, But yeah, we're our main goal right now is just to get us um, Mending so we don't want our villager to be a farmer So we don't want them with any of these blocks around the only one we want is this lectern, so I'm gonna have to pick up all these other blocks nearby to make sure our villager only will interact with the lectern. Let's get, just get rid of all these things for right now. All right, get rid of this. Don't wanna be a Fletcher. And we gotta get rid of these guys. So we should get rid of the hat. I do believe, because there shouldn't be any other thing around. Oh, you know what? I It's probably too late in the day. He won't change the job. We're gonna have to wait until the next day. So yeah, I'll go ahead and break this down a little bit, bring him inside here for safe keep safekeeping so a zombie doesn't get him. Should be just fine like so. Awesome. Okay, so I will button everything back up and we'll wait for it tomorrow. And I think before I go and grab another villager, we're gonna continue to play with this guy and try and get a good enchantment. All right, so I slept through the night. It is now daytime. Our villager is still in the boat. We need to get him out. So the best way to do that is do F3 plus B so we can see hitboxes here because you don't want to use your sword and hit the villager. You want to hit the boat. It's kind of hard to tell where the hitbox is for that. But yeah, that should be just fine. So F3 B, we will go back. Uh, so whenever the day becomes... Oh, boy, that's not what I want to have happen. Okay, uh, guy. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, uh, we don't want this guy to escape. There we go. Now our our villager turned into a librarian. So we have Impaling 5 as our very first book. That's not bad, but 42 emeralds. Hmm, a little expensive. So pretty much what we need to do in order to reset the villager and try and get a different trade, we pick up the lectern, we set it back down, and the villager resets. Now flame for 10. All right. So pretty much this is going to be us picking up, sitting down over and over again, multi-shot, until we can get ourselves mending. Uh, it is going to take a little bit of time. Sometimes you don't get the enchantments like that particular time. And this, here, there we go, 36 emeralds for mending. Now, 36 is a little expensive. I've seen it as low, I think, as 13 or 14. So I think I'm just going to keep rolling here and see if we can get one at a better price. Now, we can get it at a lower price if we set it at that 36 like it was just at. And then get the villager, um, 
turn into a zombie villager by letting a zombie come touch them and then like converting it back into a regular yeah. villager. Uh, they will lower the price, but yeah, I think it's probably just faster, better, yeah. easier for us to start with a lower price. Here we go. Just a few more attempts and there's 18 emeralds. I think we'll stick with that. That's like half the price of what the first attempt was, right? Uh, so we need to give them 18 emeralds to lock that trade. And we don't have any emeralds. Okay, so our next goal is to go talk to some of the villagers over there and see if we can trade something. Maybe I'll find a butcher who will take some of this stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I don't... What else do villagers trade for? Some of them trade for wheat, don't they? We can grab some wheat, bring that over. I'm not really sure what all the best trades that we can do right now. Maybe one of them will find... Uh, wants rotten flesh. Anyway, I'm gonna go over to the village, see if we can find a villager to trade with and see if we can get ourselves 18 emeralds. All right, guys, so I brought another villager over here. None of the other villagers at the other village had a profession except for the Fletcher who only wanted, uh, <laughs> the Fletcher only wanted me to trade emeralds for like flint or for arrows, I think. This guy, however, wants 32 run flesh per emerald, so I am okay with doing this. So I will go ahead and trade this guy. Uh, eventually his trades will get cheaper and cheaper, but uh, we can get a decent amount of emeralds from him. Uh, oh, no, I, I'm trying to shift click that way. You do it this way. You click the button over here. Okay, so now he's done. He does not want any more trades. Uh, what can happen, though, is he'll come back over here. Oh, no, I don't want him to leave. Uh, yeah, I didn't think about this. I thought he was gonna stay in here. Huh, uh, I need to go get my boat. Yeah, he's just gonna take off. Uh, so anyway, what's gonna happen is I trade with him, he locks out the the available trade, and then if he uses the brew stand again, which is his work table, then he unlocks all of his trades and you can keep trading with them. Yeah, I forgot that they can open and close wooden doors. Of course they can, villages are made out of those. I was thinking it was like the metal door, in the other place, in our storage area, where they wouldn't be able to open it. Uh-oh, where'd he go? Oh no, did he take off and go down into the swamp down here? Because it looks like that's where the guy was... It looks like where that's where he's headed. Uh... Alright, I don't know where my villager buddy is. <laughs> Maybe he went in? No. Oh no, we gotta find him! So yeah, I've been trading with this guy for a little while now. He has gotten to the point where he is accepting the run flesh for cheaper, right? Uh, it's only 31 instead of 32. He just reset again. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to continue to do this. I want to try and get as many of our mending books as possible. Now again, there are ways that we can get it cheaper. That is all of our run flesh. So we have a stack plus seven emeralds. That's really not that bad. Run flesh for emeralds? Oh yeah, let's go. Uh, so back over... Oh, you know what? I guess that button must affect that. I was like, why is that down? <laughs> uh, yeah, so back over here to this guy. 18 emeralds plus a book will get us mending. So that is going to be... Well, we can get three mending, right? So 18, 18, 18. If we had one more emerald, which we actually do right here, uh, we can get four mending books. But really what we want mending for is our elytra. That's like the most important thing. Followed by like our fortune pick and then onto our armor and then our tools. Uh, then other stuff that we can get pretty easily though. Uh, so let's see, we need to get ourselves a book, right? So we needed, well, we need three books actually. So let's do three leather. We'll grab some paper. That'd be another villager that we could also do is get ourselves another uh, librarian villager who wants to trade for paper. So that would also be a pretty good way for us to get more emeralds. But I think we're doing pretty good as it is. So let's do mending. Mending. And mending. We'll take it. I like it. Oh, give me that back. Okay. So we have 17 emeralds remaining. I don't think our guy's going to level up at all. Uh, oh, actually, he only wants 17 emeralds for a mending now. He uh, is cheaper. All right. Let's do it. I will take another mending for 17. One off. I like it. Uh, Paper. There we go. One more book. What did I do with the leather? Found it. All right, let's go, guy. Give me one more mending. Dude, that is awesome. So see how easy mending is to get now? This is crazy, in my opinion. Uh, the elytra we want to put mending on, and we also want unbreaking. I think I had an unbreaking book uh, back at our mob farm. 
So we'll leave these guys alone over here for now. I'm going to head up to the mob farm, see what we have as far as enchanted books would go, and then we'll continue on. All right, guys, so up here at our mob farm, we have a bunch of enchanted books that I spent a lot of our levels on trying to just get good enchantments so we have them for later. I'm breaking three was one of those, and then we also have an efficiency four, which we can convert one of our picks to efficiency five with. But anyway, let's grab this um, unbreaking book. We want to use our anvil. So anvil plus the unbreaking three levels to up our elytra to an unbreaking elytra. And then we'll add mending to it. That's the really important thing because now we can use this elytra over and over and over and not worry about flight. Yes, this is good. Uh, so now that we have the ability to fly, or at least use our elytra for longer and then repair it, uh, we do want to use this gunpowder so we can get ourselves rockets. Uh, I think all I need is one stack. Actually, maybe a little bit more. I think just a stack of paper. I can't remember how this all works. It's been a minute. Let's take a look. So we take the sugar cane. We convert that to paper. And the paper... Oh, no. We're going to need far more than that. Yeah. So we're going to do three gunpowder to one paper, which gives us a flight duration of three. So that gives us a pretty long flight duration, which is great. So we can take these and do that again. Some more of these rockets. Oh, yeah. So we have quite a few of these rockets now, which is great. That's what we want. Let's go for our very first flight. Jumping off. Elytra activated. Oh, man. Okay, so we have the ability to fly now in Minecraft. And if you haven't seen this before, these rockets... They allow you to actually fly. Now, you got to be careful with the rockets and boosting and the elytra and stuff. You can kill yourself if you run into something. Like if you use a rocket and then you fly right into a block. Yeah, you'll do a lot of damage and or kill yourself, depending on your enchantments and how hard you hit and all that kind of stuff. So you do got to be careful about it. But yeah, I mean, this is going to be really, really awesome for us. So let's go ahead and grab... Hmm... Yeah, we'll just put Mending on the pickaxe. We want to do that. So Mending on here, that only costs two levels, and we can repair. And the same thing for a Silk Touch. I feel like both of those are pretty important for us to do. Now, beyond that, I mean, our Shovel is also pretty low on durability, but so is some of our armor. I don't know really what the best to do right now. Like, we can just sit here and farm for uh, more Ron Flesh to trade for emeralds to get more Mending. So maybe putting on our sword would be the next best one? I honestly don't know. But anyway, what we need to do at this point, if we want to mend stuff, uh, yeah, we just attack monsters. That's pretty much it. Uh, the more mending armor you have on, the slower it is to mend. So if you're only holding one item in your offhand that has mending and no armor that has mending, all of the XP that can mend will go to this. So that's the fastest way to mend something. Uh, if you have armor on, you get you know a chance for this one 20 percent chance 20 percent chance 20 percent chance so on and so on right so yeah pretty much you want to take off all of your armor except for the one piece that you want mended uh if you have mending on them since we don't have mending it doesn't matter for us right now but yeah so you can see like every single time we give orb our our uh, diamond pickaxe here is gaining durability which is fantastic Anyway, so I'll go ahead and continue mending this up and then collect some more round flesh. Maybe we'll get enough to get ourselves some more mending books. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I got mending on our elytra, as we saw. I put mending on my helmet and we have mending on both of our pickaxes. Yep. And then I also got another mending book and I put it on our feet. I feel like feather falling unbreaking protection is one of those pairs of armor you don't want to have to remake. Um... So the next ones are probably going to go on our other two pair of armor, our other two pieces of armor that don't have it, followed by probably a sword, a shovel, and then our axe. Now, here's the thing. Our villager here, our apothecary villager, has leveled up. You can see he has the diamond. I believe he's fully mastered, so he doesn't have an experience bar anymore. So these are all the trades that we have unlocked. Um, so I got rid of all the round flesh, and I saw it was two gold ingots for an emerald. I was like, you know what? gold is pretty worthless in minecraft like you can use it for a few things but not a whole lot of things so i went ahead and i traded a bunch of gold until he locked out that and then and that unlocked all of his trades but the interesting one is right here i feel like eight glass bottles for an emerald that's eight pieces of sand 
How? for an emerald. I mean, obviously you have to smelt it or whatever, right? But I feel like that is a steal. So if we come back over here to our sand thing, we smelted up a whole bunch of glass previously so we could do some stuff with that, but I think we're gonna change our plan just ever so slightly here, make some glass bottles and get ourselves some more emeralds. Now, remember, that's only three stacks of glass that we just did. He wants eight per emerald. Let's see what we can do here. So we're up to 10, 14. Oh, wait, and we gotta wait. There it goes, now we can do it again. Huh. 22, so there is another mending book for three stacks of glass, right? Three stacks of sand. Oh my goodness, guys. Oh, you know what? It wasn't even three stacks. We still got half a bottle, or have a stack of bottles here, right? Now we're up to 26 of these things. Man, that is really good. So I'll go ahead and continue uh, getting mending from this guy, get on the rest of our armor pieces. Yeah, and then we will see where we're at from there. All right, guys, so we have mending on everything now. Mending on our diamond helmet, our elytra, all of our armor, our chest plate, all of our different tools that can have mending on it. The bow cannot, since it has infinity. It's mutually exclusive, infinity and mending, so you can't do that. Uh, but yeah, everything else that we have has mending on it, and everything is now repaired, which is fantastic. Now, one of the best things about doing this is we can now kind of explore around our area and actually get a better idea of what we have nearby. Yeah, uh, without being able to fly around with the Elytra, it is really, really hard to see what's in your neighboring chunks, what you have over here. There could be a desert right here and I wouldn't know it, right? Uh, I mean, pretty much we've been limited to where our boat can take us, but yeah, now that we have the Elytra, we can fly around, start mapping out the place, Kind of get a general idea of where everything is. Check out shipwrecks and things. Is this one that we have already checked out? I don't actually know. Let's take a look here. I think this might have been one we checked out previously. Uh, we swimming? Uh, let's get in here. A door, get a breath. No, we haven't been here. Buried treasure map. All right. So that's something that we can go do that will allow us to try and get a, uh, a conduit or I guess a heart of the ocean, which is used to create a conduit, which is kind of like an underwater beacon. Uh, I kind of checked that out a little bit before, like when I was uh, playing vanilla in a hardcore setting on my live streams. So that's kind of a cool thing to do. Here's another chest. We got some more iron, some iron nuggets, a diamond, and some lapis. Yep, diamonds really aren't super valuable, I feel like, in vanilla anymore. Now that you have the super easy access to get mending on all your pieces from villagers for pretty much next to nothing. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of reason. Ooh, let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of reason to hoard diamonds. Yeah, it's just one of those things that seems weird because diamonds used to be like the most precious thing you'd always be mining for more, but now it doesn't really feel like you need to. Hmm. Anyway, uh, you can find multiple, uh, multiple treasure or yeah, treasure chests, I guess just regular chests in these boats, up to three of them. I was trying to see if there's another one. I guess the other one that we would, we would find would be up front in the captain's quarters. Uh, but yeah, there is nothing like that now. Also, now that we have villagers at our base, I gotta be really careful about killing these guys and going back to the base with bad omen. Yeah, I could start a raid at the base and then I'd have to fight it in order to take it back into my stuff. That's something that we gotta be really, really careful about. But anyway, guys, we're gonna go ahead. Whoa, see if I can get going. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and wrap the episode up here for today. Yep, this is really awesome. Being able to fly around. Ooh. <laughs> so cool. But anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.